I want you to think of someone you love, someone you truly care for. Just how far would you go for them? What obstacles would you go through? What barriers would you cross? Today we'll be talking about not only one of FromSoft's greatest NPCs, but someone who exemplified the definitions of love and loyalty. We meet Blythe in the Mistwood Ruins, where he's looking to find Darrowill, whom he speaks of as nothing more than a traitor, which is our first look into the character Blythe is. Who goes there? Carly sent you, did he? Ever the bloody busybody. Hmm. Maybe to him you don't seem so strange. The name's Blythe. I'm looking for a man who goes by Darrowill. He fled somewhere nearby. Or so I've heard. Come tell me if you find him before I do. I can offer you ample reward. With our help eliminating Darrowill, Blythe shows us that he's a man of his word and goes above and beyond, telling us to meet the giant blacksmith, Eiji, who will be of great use to us. If you venture north to Rhea Lucaria and come across a venerable blacksmith who's a little on the large side, tell him I sent you, and he'll be sure to treat you right. Blythe is loyal himself and appreciates it greatly in return. E.G. speaks of how this is unusual for Blythe, which clearly means we've made an impression upon him. Quite a rare occurrence for such a guarded soul as he. Perhaps he sensed something unusual about you. Upon speaking to Kale, the merchant, he echoes what we suspected as far as Blythe's character. He's boorish, blunt, and couldn't find his nose with both hands. But he's a good egg. I think the two of you are sure to find the best in one another. We run back into our half-wolf friend when we enter the service of his very own mistress, Ronnie. Blythe was entrusted to protect Ronnie as her shadow. The no-nonsense Blythe lets us know that he's in Limgrave looking for a way into the city of Necron. When we arrive, Blythe informs us that we need to ask the quote, little rat, Selvis, what the key is to getting to Necron. Through this, we find out from Sorceress Sullen that we must take on the Almighty General Radon to free the stars in Mistress Ronnie's destiny. Of course, Blythe is ready to eliminate this obstacle without hesitation through the festival of Radon, known to be the strongest of the demigods at one point. Once more into the fray together, eh? <laughs> this might even be fun. But Blythe's loyalty and faith in Ronnie eclipse that of even Radon's power. With Radon defeated, Ronnie is free to continue down her dark path with us and her shadow Blythe at her side. The door to Necron has been opened and Blythe's determination hasn't slowed in the slightest. To Nokra, where Ronnie's fate will be decided. Let's meet where the falling star bit the earth. We'll take up our souls once more for Mistress Ronnie. After recovering the finger-slaying blade for Mistress Ronnie, we are told by Ronnie to eliminate baleful shadows that have been sent by the Two Fingers to destroy her for refusing to obey them and continuing on her dark path. The baleful shadow we eliminate is made in the image of her most loyal servant, Blythe. But as this baleful shadow lacks the love, loyalty, and faith Blythe has, we swiftly dismiss it. Tell Blythe and E.G. I love them. Upon retrieving the Dark Moon Ring and solidifying our spot as Ronnie's Lord, something is amiss. Blythe had been locked away by Ronnie's very own War Council, the giant that we met previously, E.G. When we speak to him, we learn of something tragic. The shadow that was given to Ronnie was the very person that would be her demise. Blythe became a curse that plagued Lady Ronnie, yet even in madness, gave himself to her. I made a grave misjudgment. And I thought myself a capable war counselor. The Two Fingers provided the loyal Blythe to Ronnie for protection, but they also put him there as a failsafe, a sleeper agent if you will. Blythe was cursed to eliminate the very mistress he loved and served faithfully if she were to disobey and stray from the greater will's path. When we return to Ronnie's rise, we find Blythe, assassin bodies surrounding him, on a knee. As you can tell, he's been fighting sword and fang to protect his love, to protect Mistress Ronnie. No, I'm part of her very being. I can never be so... <sighs> In these last moments, the few last breaths he takes as a free soul, he questions the very curse that is taking control. It's impossible. How could he ever hurt her? He's her shadow. He's part of her. 
We realize that even in the midst of this curse taking control, Blythe fought to protect the one he loved. He fought not only the demigod Radon, the many assassins that lay at his feet, but the cursed destiny that he was bound to. Sadly, in this story, his final battle with the curse does not end in triumph like the battle did at Redmain Castle. With a howl, his eyes filled with red in the vengeance the fingers sought for Ronnie's deception. All the time spent fighting his cursed destiny has left him shattered. Blythe would succumb to the curse and fall by our sword. This is the greatest kindness we could deliver for our friend, to let him die as Ronnie's shadow, her ever-loyal companion. The sword and armor we receive from Blythe further cements the man that our hero was, the amount of love he had for Ronnie, the loyalty, the faith. I ask you again to think of someone you love. Just how far would you go for them? Blythe was a man of few words, but his actions showed vividly the type of person he was. He was destined for corruption and lived his life as a humble, loyal, and faithful companion to his very last breath for the one he loved. Blythe showed us the power of will. He showed us that we are greater than our perceived destinies, and we will not soon forget the lessons of the Half-Wolf and continue to fight Sword and Fang in his honor.